This power supply was made to power a CB, a Messenger 123, a Johnson Messenger 123, which CBs put out about four watts, and the uh, are, are the outputs linear? That means they're like 50% efficient. It, it should be running about eight watts input power plus the rest of the radio. So maybe a, a CB might, might draw 12 watts at 12 volts, might draw about one amp. So this power supply was made to run a little more than one amp. And looking inside it, you, you can see there aren't very, very many parts. Um, there are four individual, this, this thing was made in the 60s. There are four individual diodes and a bridge. There are two electrolytic capacitors. The, the first one is, uh, the, the main one off the diode bridge is 1,000 microfarads. And as I said, 1,000 microfarads per amp of u usable power is about the minimum you want to put in. It's much, much nicer if you can afford it to put in two, three, 5,000 microfarads per amp, 1,000. Now, uh, just to make sure it's going to work, they, they do put another 500, that 470, on the output. But that, that isn't part of your filtering. That's part of your uh, surge accommodation. And on, on those power supplies, I, I've looked at quite a few of them over the years. I saw three different circuits. The first circuit was real simple. All it was was a zener on the base of a trans big transistor um, which on your schematics is the bottom left schematic. And I've drawn this in typical fashion for a, an NPN transistor. You know on an NPN it takes plus voltage to make it go and it takes plus current on the base called forward bias to uh, make it conduct. And when you go to measure uh, the voltage on an N NPN transistor, <coughs> there will be a large voltage like 12 volts or more, in this, in this case 30 on the collector, and uh, the, the base voltage is held at 15 volts on the original design. They, they had a 15 volt zener, and as you know on a silicon transistor, the kind that uh, uh, will handle heat better than germanium transistors, germanium transistors were invented in Iowa. A couple of farmers that got out of the corn business started growing flowers, and, the, and they found that some of the flower stuff the geraniums were good to make transistors. This is back in early electronic history. You probably aren't aware of this, but anyway, um, the, the the design of this is 15 uh, 15 volt zener on the base, and with the base emitter voltage drop of about six tenths or so, you're getting out over 14 volts to power your radio, which means the radio ran real good, the light was bright, and it put out not four, but you know, four and a half watts. Um, and, uh, I, oh, I, I've drawn in the circuitry there an output load resistor and an LED. As, as you can see, this is now plugged in, and there's no lights. It, I don't think they had LEDs when they f first came out with these things. LEDs first started showing up in commercial equipment, like the end of the 60s, 1970, little red ones. They didn't have those when this was first designed. Um, the, the circuit that's in this one, and also in this one, I did open it and look, is much more modern, and I forget what the intermediate one was. The, this circuitry runs like a, 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 7812, a, a, a 7815 regulator chip. The, all the circuitry and the pass transistor are in an integrated circuit. Uh, it, it looks like one three-legged power transistor bolted to the bottom of the case there. It's not just a transistor, it is like a 7815. And it puts out, uh, this one puts out 14.7 volts. And then there's a protective diode, so you don't get voltage going back the other way. And the, the final output after the voltage drop uh, is 14.3. Also, the, the other indication that this is a, a one amp power supply all these diodes, including the protective diode on the output, are ordinary little ones, uh, you know, typical rectifier diodes that are only good for one, one amp. So don't try to run two amps out of this. 
Regarding the design, the 30 volts uh, pre-regulated voltage, the reason they do that is when you, when you draw one amp with a 1,000 volt, uh, a thousand microfarad capacitor, you're going to get a lot of ripple. I, I just measured this. I, I, uh, I took this power resistor, which is a 15 ohm power resistor, which will draw just short of one amp at 14.3 at volts. And I'm, me I'm measuring the input voltage, which is 33.5 volts. Now I'm hooking up a load, and my input voltage drops to 26.5 volts. From 33 down to 26, let's see, that's dropped 7 volts. Um, that that's a DC reading, in order and and you know that you know there's ripple. So if the ripple is going as high as 33, and it's measuring an average of 26, it must be going down as low as 19. If, if it goes down seven seven volts on on average, the 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 bottom of the wave shape, the the the, the sawtooth wave shape thing on on the filter capacitor must be going as low as 19. So that regulator chip in there is taking 33 or 19 or 33 or 19 and putting out 14.7. A lot of ripple. And the other bad thing about this is if anything ever shorts, if, it ever, if you try to draw too much current and the the regulator chip is either going to open or short. If it shorts, you're going to get 33 volts on your radio. Um, some power supplies, like Astron's, run 23 in. 23 will do a lot of damage to a radio, but if it's loaded down, maybe it's only putting out 21, and some radios might survive with 21 volts on them. Motorola as well. Motorola handy talkies well. Anyway, um, so that that's that's the regulator circuit, and I'm going to unplug this because there, there's no LEDs there, and I, I don't want to stick my hand. Yeah. All right. Um, regulator circuits. Uh, Fancy regulator circuits, uh, other than this first one with the Zener diode, fancy regulator circuits are based on differential amps. I've drawn a, uh, a little schematic one here in the, in the middle. Looks kind of like this. A, a differential amp compares the difference between two signals. And we're looking at just DC signals. The left side of this looks like the regulator circuit we just looked at with the Zener diode on the base. You, you may have 12 volts coming out of your regulator, or 13.8, whatever you set it at. Your, your nominal 12 volt output comes through this resistor, and in this case, I've suggested a 5.1 volt Zener diode. So the base of this, the left side of this differential amplifier will be at 5.1. <coughs> Over here, I have a voltage divider, and if you put the uh, wiper of the adjustable resistor in the middle, in the middle, in this perfect design, you will get exactly 5.1 volts on the base of, of this half of the differential amplifier, which with the uh, 0.6 or 7 volt uh, drop across the base emitter junction in a silicon transistor, you'll wind up with 4.5 volts on the emitter. And uh, you choose this resistor to have a couple of milliamps flow through these two transistors. Um, let's see, 4.5 volts. If, if this were uh, a couple hundred ohms, you might have 5 or 10 milliamps. And half of the current would flow through each transistor. All right. Um, now, uh, this, this is going to wind up being a, a voltage regulator. It, as you see, it's going to go, go over here. I, I've not filled this in yet. It's going to regulate the, the, the supply voltage here is your 23 volts in an Astron or 33 in the case of this Johnson power supply. 
the si supply voltage is going to be regulated by this series pass transistor. And you notice we haven't yet put it in an arrow in there because I don't know what kind it's going to be. And we're going to get out 12 volts. Well, suppose the voltage goes up. Suppose it goes to 12.1. Then this 5 volt, five, this 5.1 here that's evenly balanced with the other side is going to go up a little bit. What happens when you increase the voltage uh, at this point? Uh, uh, actually, the, vo the volt voltage is going to stay the same. The, the, there's going to be an increase in current here. And the current is going to turn this transistor on harder. And it's going to try to raise the emitter volt. It's going to be amplified and tries to raise this emitter voltage from 4.5 up to 4.6. Well, that won't happen, but it, what, what it will do is uh, it will reduce the current flow in this transistor due to, due to this signal going plus. When, when this base goes plus due to a, a voltage rise here, the voltage rise here is caused by maybe a reduction in the load. You, you quit transmitting. You let go of the push-to-talk switch, and the voltage tends to go up. This increased voltage tends to make this increase, which narrows the voltage available to, to turn this transistor on. So this transistor turns off a little bit. So the differential amplifier goes like this. When this transistor turns off a little bit, what happens to the voltage at this point? You, you notice I, there's no resistor in the collector load of this transistor, and there is a, a resistor here. Here's where we're going to get our, our our voltage output, our, our differential output. This voltage will go, let's see, if this goes plus, and this goes plus, and this goes plus, this voltage is going to go up. It's going to go in, the, in a positive direction when this goes positive. Yeah the strips. And that, that's going to cause, when we get done designing this, that's going to cause this circuit to regulate. Um, I'm going to take this positive change in voltage over here through a resistor and apply it to this NPN transistor. So there's going to be a positive change here. What happens what happens on a, on a transistor when you put a positive change in on the base? You get a, a positive change out the emitter, but that's not going anywhere. And you get the opposite, a, a negative change on the collector. Remember, remember that? Well, for you tube guys, if you put a plus and minus in on the grid, you get a minus and plus out on the plate. Same thing on, tra on transistors, and it doesn't matter whether they're NPNs or PNPs. If you go in on the gazinta, the base, and come out on the gazauta, the collector, the, the output is out of phase. It goes the, goes the other direction. So this minus here, we want to go through this transistor, and hey, if it came out of the transistor here in the minus direction, um, it would counteract the increase in voltage over here that we w was or originally caused by uh, letting go of the push talk switch. Let's see. If you had a transistor where you put in a minus and get out a minus, that would be, uh, uh, it, that's the same phase. So that would be going in on the base and coming out on the emitter. So this would have to be an NPN. So there you have a series voltage regulator that works. When the voltage tends to go up a little, this is negative feedback and it will keep it at the same voltage. Um, and the key again is a differential amplifier or a comparing amplifier. <coughs> and it's comparing this variable input with this non-varying Zener voltage. 
Well, zener, uh, zener diodes vary a little due to temperature and they vary due to current, but the current here is, is pretty constant by this uh, resistor. Also, a, as you go over here, this transistor is going to warm up as it gets used and the gain of it is going to vary. So the, 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 the loop gain is going to vary. And so this, this regulator circuit will not stay within a thousandth of a volt of where you want it. Fortunately, we don't really care unless the voltage varies by a, you know, a volt or two. But I, I used to work on a, on a fancy navigation uh, system where the, the reference voltage was 10.000 and they didn't want it to vary more than five one thousandths. So they did use, and this is back in the old days with discrete circuitry, they did use differential amplifiers and the others were differential amps too and they were all on heat sinks and uh, they went to quite a bit of trouble to... Is that the navigation system? Inertial nav by Lytton back in aught, you know, Vietnam days, F4s. Um, now, now what you can do, and I, I, I've made several of these and I didn't bring one. Th this, this top circuit that I drew, uh, it uses one of these three terminal regulators like, like is in here. And the, the key part is like a 7812 or a 7815 or I have chosen to use a 7805. You, you, can, you can buy these three terminal regulators, the 78 series, 7800 series, in numerous voltages. You can buy 05, 06, 09, 12, 15, um, and, and they're all uh, limited to about 30 volts maximum input. So really, you, you shouldn't be using a 7800 series on this circuit because this runs 33 in. <coughs> maybe, maybe it's 40, 40 volts at absolute maximum. Do you remember what maximum rating of 7812 is? I've cooked them doing more than 40. <laughs> I tell you that. I used to have them on a 48 volt supply to drop it down. They didn't last very long. They got hot. Oh. <laughs> so don't run them at 48 I volts. Do that. Well, what, what I have done, I, I used to like to build my own power supplies because I, I can understand, you know, plus, minus, and amps. When it, when it starts, you know, varying in frequency and starts going, you know, 100 kC, that, it gets hard for me to follow. I'd like you to look, look at this circuit. It's really interesting the way it works. Um, that first resistor on the left, the next to the big transistor, it's either a three ohm five watt or a five ohm three watt, and it doesn't matter whether it's a th um, If you're gonna draw a small amount of current, like, you know, a couple of milliamps, a couple of milliamps, as it goes through a three ohm or a five ohm resistor, it won't drop much voltage, and it will be applied to the 7805. But for now, think of it as a 7812. You want to get 12 volts out of this. It, your, your input voltage, your, your unregulated 20, 25, whatever, is going to be applied to your three terminal regulator. 20 something goes in, and precisely 12 comes out. And it stays there. And, and these things are good for an amp. <clears throat> the 78L12 or the 78L05 are good for half an amp, and they cost a little less if you're trying to be cheap like these people. Um, now, a, as you draw more, uh, remember the capability of the 7812 is one amp. And you want to run a radio. I mean, you want to draw like, you know, five amps on transmit maybe. You got a 25 watt radio. This circuit will do it, and it'll do it with the help of that pass transistor up top there. As it draws, uh, you know, more than a couple uh, or a couple hundred milliamps, the couple hundred milliamps going through the either your three ohm five watt or five ohm three watt doesn't matter, will develop seven tenths of a volt at some current and it'll turn this uh, pass transistor on. 
and you see the pass transistor goes over the top of the 7812. <coughs> so that begins passing your 12 volts out to your radio. And if you get too much out, if you get you know 12 and a half volts out, the 7812 will say, wait a minute, 78, uh, uh, 12 and a half is too much, shut down. It'll shut down, it'll draw less current through the, the resistor we're talk talking about here, and the pass transistor will turn off. And of course, all this will even itself out. And what happens is the first couple hundred milliamps goes through the 7812, and the rest of it, up to several amps, goes through the pass transistor. And let's see. Um, we decided that the, the pass transistor, the, the first part is going to be the emitter and the bottom thing is going to be the, the base. And then the output is going to be 12 volts. Wait a minute, if you have 12 volts on the collector and 23 on the emitter, the collector is negative with respect to the emitter, right? So that's, that's a PNP. So now, now you can mark this thing. You wouldn't mark it like this. You'd, you'd mark on the other leg, and the arrow would go in the other direction. So you mark on the in, incoming leg, and you, you mark the arrow pointing towards the base, like that. And that means you have a PNP tra pass transistor. The way I remember it is, NPNs are, are normal, plus voltage. <laughs> PNPs are the, uh, everything's upside down. But doesn't the arrow point the direction the current's coming from? I don't know. The, the, the arrow, arrow points to the N material. Uh, in, in this case, the arrow is pointing out towards, so this is N, P, N. This is a normal transistor. Yeah. On, on the one on, the, on this circuit, the arrow is pointing oh, okay. in. That's, that's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on this circuit, it's backwards, and those transistors are funny, you know, they... So I, I, I accept them, they work, but they're opposite from everybody else. Right, right there, you say that one's showing an NPN. Yes. So your, your negative voltage would be coming against the arrow, so it's showing the direction that your power is coming If from. you remember it that way, that's fine. I remember it as PNP is, you know, no. I'm not that kind. Well, I did good in it until they switched the transistor on us, and it didn't work at all. All right, ba ba back to this circuit. Um, the, 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 the 7812, or, or the, 78, the 7800 series of regulators are made with a gazillion uh, differential amplifiers. That's why I started out with differential amplifiers. The, where, where it measures the uh, error, it, the circuitry looks something like that internally in the IC. And the, the output of that, maybe you got two outputs, goes over to your next differential amplifier and gets amplified. Goes over to the next differential amplifier, two transistors, and gets amplified. And the, the other key uh, piece of information on a differential amplifier is the current stays the same. Um, as I, going back here, the, when I first stated that the, you know th this voltage goes up to you know tries to go up from 5.1, the voltage doesn't actually go up; just the current goes up. But the the voltage here stays the same, so the current through this resistor stays the same. So this differential pair current stays the same, and that's what makes this circuit work with the 7805. The third terminal, the ground terminal of the 7800, 7800 series regulators, is right at four milliamps. And it doesn't vary. When you're drawing nothing, it's four milliamps. When you're drawing an amp out of it, it's four. It's, it's uh, four milliamps. So if you have a constant current and a variable resistor, this circuit, you can vary the voltage by putting a pot in the ground circuit. Again. You use a 7805 here, you put a pot in the bottom lead, about a 2K pot. That'll give you an, an eight, 8 volt range. And that, if you're using a 7805, 
that will let you vary from 5 to 8 volts more than that, 13. Well, you, you put another little resistor in there, another couple, couple hundred ohms, and now you can vary it from like 8 to 16 with your 2K pot. And, and you notice how the 2K pot is wired? And, and you know how pots get scratchy and they don't make connection anymore? You don't want to have that circuit be an open because the voltage would go high. So you, you wire it like this where the, uh, in this circuit, you wire it so that you always have 2K or less resistance in that circuit. And what I, what I like about this is, of course, nowadays you, you can buy regulator supplies all over the place. But here you have uh, the 7805, the 2K pot, the PNP pass transistor, the 3 ohm 5 watt or 5 ohm 3, ohm, 3 watt, and two little capacitors, 10 microfarads or so. Five or six parts, and you got a regulator circuit that'll handle seven amps. <clears throat> um, I had one of these going, and uh, somebody came over. This, this is at the old house. This was a couple of years ago. And somebody came over, and they said, Hey, uh, how, how much current will that handle? And I said, I don't know. Let, let's find out. Out, ground. And I noticed that... And I, I was using a yellow clip lead, the same color. And I noticed that the wire kind of got saggy. And then I noticed that the yellow plastic started to melt. So I, I unclipped it, and, and it, even the ends were hot. And I thought, gee, that's interesting. It didn't blow the fuse. There must have been something else in the circuit further, further back that limited the current to you know, less than 25 or 30 amps. And it still worked after I got done. And, so, and a, a week later, somebody else came over, and I did it again. I said, look at this. Click, click. Take it off, and it's still putting out 12 volts. And I, did it as, I, I showed it to half a dozen people. Then I noticed that after that, when I turned on the radio, the, the light in, in the dial would go real bright and then come down. And every time you turn it... And so I got out my voltmeter, and I, I found out that the, the circuit was going, you know, 17, 13.8. So after I, I learned, and I, I turned the power supply for, on first and then turned the radio on. But this circuit with a PNP power transistor, you know, in a TO3 case, a metal case, and you bolt it to a, a piece of aluminum, will run 5, 6, 7 amps easy and will run more uh, for a brief period. All right, ba ba back to these power supplies. As I said, this, this one runs 33 volts on the input. What happens if the pass transistor shorts? Big problems. Has anybody ever heard of someone who bought, say, an off-brand switcher, like a Samlex 25 or 23 amp switching power supply, hooked it to their, was it a 706 or something else, and the Samlex was putting out, was it, 20 or 30 volts, and somebody said, Cecil, you should have gotten an Astron. Oh, that exact thing. So there, there goes his Samlex and his expensive radio. 28 volts is what I got. 28 volts. Out of what? Out of power supply after, the, uh, after it blew. What kind of power supply? Pyramid. I have a Kenwood that's, that has that much output, but I fortunately caught it before I ever did anything. A Kenwood power supply? A Kenwood. What, a, a 12 amp, a 20 amp, what? You know, I think it's for a 430. So a, a PS430 Kenwood? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'll bring it. <coughs> I, I bought it on an auction, so I, I, was, I checked it before I plugged it in there, and it was showing 24 volts. 24 volts. Yeah. So I assume it's, you know, past transistor shorted or... That or my regulation circuit somehow is gone. I cut the cord off. Um, oh, so uh, another uh, piece of paper he got was the uh, Astron 35 circuit. Um, anybody know how many transistors they got on the back of an Astron 35? How, how many are on the back of a 20? Two. 
two. How many are on the, on the back of a 50? I, I got a 50, and there's like a bunch of them. Eight, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's Well, I'm talking on, on, on the back, on the heat sinks. Anyway, my, my point is uh, uh, um, you, you need you, one transistor will not handle 20 or 35 amps. Actually, uh, a, I, think a, a, I think a 2N3055 is rated at 15 amps maximum, but that's under special circumstances. The 2N3771 transistor that Astron uses in BEC is rated at 30 amps, again, under special circumstances, and that is with very low voltage from the emitter to collector. Because, as you see, if, if it had two volts between the emitter and collector and it's running 30 amps, that's 60 watts. Uh, that that, that diamond-shaped aluminum package, when you use the good aluminum or, or copper, is rated at, only the best ones are rated at 150 watts maximum power dissipation. Um, the ones that have a little thinner piece of aluminum or aren't made with as good glue or something will only handle like 90 watts. So um, in the case of an Astron 35, if you're putting in 23 volts and have it tuned down so it's only putting it 12 volts out, in other words, if you have the maximum voltage across the transistor, that could be as much as 11 volts across the transistor. Um, and if, it, if, it, if the current split four ways, what's a quarter of uh, 35? Uh, nine, nine amps? What's nine amps times 11 volts? A hundred watts. A hundred watts on a TO3 transistor package will get it real hot. That, that's, I mean, 150 is, is manufacturer's maximum spec. You don't run, want to run it at, you know, any at over half spec usually. So um, back to uh, my circuit with the 7812 or, or in, any, any pass transistor, if you're, if you're talking about using those oval or diamond shaped metal transistors, you don't, you don't want to run the transistor more than you know, 50, 75 watts which means if, there, if there's about 10 volts across it, you don't want to be running more than about 7 amps. And that's what my, my power supply used to do. 7 amps, I think I was running a 25 watt rig. And when, when I did the trick with the uh, clip lead, I did that briefly, I mean for a second or two at a time, maybe five or six seconds, and it got warmer, but it, it, it had some uh, some thermal inertia that it didn't destroy the transistor. Back to, back to power supplies for a moment. Astrons are good. Pyramids aren't made as good. They fail. I've heard of a Samlex switcher failing and blowing a radio. Uh, one reason Astrons are good is in addition to all the circuitry, they have an SCR in the output. Do, do you see, it? see this diode with three wires on it? over towards, towards the right-hand side. Uh, SCR1, 2N6505. So you can 6505. See that thing? You know what that does? When, when the voltage gets over about 16 or something, yeah, it, the, the voltage at the output goes to zero. It, it shorts, it shorts the output to ground. And what it's supposed to do is blow the fuse. If you, if you put in too large a fuse, yeah. So, and I, I've, I don't, I've rarely heard of Astrons that you know blew the fuse and it said, oh, the overvoltage protection on the SCR is working. I, ha I haven't heard that comment, but uh, there's protection there. If this supply were to try to go to 23 volts on the output, at, as it went past 16, the, the silicon-controlled rectifier, the SCR, would 
short it out. Back to power supply circuits for a moment and my 7805 circuit. If, if you're using a 7812, I have seen people take a 7812 and apply that to the base of an NPN, uh, you know, a big NPN, uh, to get more than one amp output. The, the problem with that is, as, as the current var varies on the output, the, the, uh, the base emitter voltage on the NPN will vary a tenth or two. So your, your output voltage is not as well regulated as with this PNP circuit. With this PNP circuit, the output stays within a, a few hundredths of a volt due to the regulating action of the 7800 circuit. If, if you, um, in, in, my, in my circuit, the 7800 and the PNP are both connected to the output and the output stays with very close to whatever you adjust it to. <coughs> if you use the NPN, sort of like this, and, and hook the, the, the output terminal of the 7812 to here, or as is done here with the Zener, the output voltage does change by a tenth of, tenth of a volt.